Hi welcome back to BlackBronx.com channel. Today, we going to do camera mapping using After Effects. We going to turn 2D image into 3D dimension. So let's get started. First, we need to create a new composition. I rename this comp as Camera Mapping. Then I set the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and frame rate is 60 frame per second. For the duration I just set it only 3 second long. Here I got image that I'm going to use for this tutorial. For this effects it perfect match with image that has perspective like tunnel street or alleyway. To scale down the image, you can right click on this image and then go to transform and choose fit to comp width to match the size with the comp. Perfect. Now let's create camera for this project. You can right click here and go to new and select camera. Here I rename my camera as main camera and I set focal length project as 35mm. Then click OK. Next, I'm going to create a new solid for our perspective grid. I'm right click here, then go to new and select solid layer. Here I rename for this solid layer as grid and the color I set to white. Then click OK. Next we need to apply grid effect by going to the presets and effects panel. Here I'm type grid then I simply drag the effect to my solid layer. Now you can see our solid layer turn into grid line. Next we need to activate this layer as to turn it into 3D layer by hit this 3D box icon. Now let's match our grid with background image perspective. You can rotate this grid by hit W for shortcut and you can also hold shift key while you rotate the grid to snap the rotation angle. Here I'm positioning the grid to match with my background perspective. Next, you can duplicate this grid by hit Ctrl plus D and do for another side of perspective. I also can rename all my grid layers to make my workflow more neat. Here I change my current view from active camera and switch it into top view. Now is more easy for me to make sure all my grid layers are connected together and prevent from having gap. Here is last part which we need to create grid for this background. I'm select this grid layer and I hit Ctrl plus D to duplicate it. Then I rename it as grid background. Next I want to reset this grid position by go to drop down menu here, then I hit reset for the transform. Now you can easily to move this grid to the background. Now we done match positioning our grid follow background perspective. Here you can see the result by hit C for camera and you can rotate it. Now it's look perfect for the grid. Alright, next we need to adjust material option for all grid layers before I'm going to apply lighting for the scene. 
I'm going back to my grid layer and hit drop down menu, then go to material options. For cast shadow I set it to off. For light transmission I set it to 0%. Next I turn on for accept shadows and I set off for accept light. Here we need to apply same settings for all grid layers. After we done set material options, now we need to turn off all effects for our grid layers. Just select all grid layers and hit the effect icon here. Here I noticed my grid got some gap. Don't worry, let's fix this issue by adjust our grid layer position. Now it's look perfect. Right now we ready to create light to illuminate our scene. I just right click here, then go to and new and select light. Here we going to create spotlight. I set color for this spotlight to white. For intensity I set to 100. Cone angle for the light I set to 180 degree. Cone feather I set to 0% and I turn on cast shadows. For the shadow darkness I set to 100%. We ready to go. Alright, next let's align position for light layer and background layer with our camera position. Here I hit P for reveal position option for camera. Then I just select position and control plus C to copy the position attribute. Next, I just select light layer and hit control plus V to paste the position attribute to here. I also do the same to background layer. But before that you need to activate 3D layer for background by hit 3D box icon. Then you can just paste the position attribute. Right now light and background layer line up with camera position. Next I need to move background layer far away little bit from camera to make some gap. From the top view, I move my background layer forward little bit from the camera. Perfect. Now let's going back to our main camera view. From here you can see our background layer is really big and out of scale. First we need to select background layer and hit S for scale option. I reduce the size until I can see the whole image. Next I'm right click here and go to transform and select fit to comp width. Now the background size back to normal. For the last part we need to adjust material option for our background layer. Here I'm select background and go to material options. I change cast shadows to only. And I'm increase light transmission for 0 to 100. Alright, we ready to start animate our camera. Here I try move my camera angle to see our 3D camera mapping. Look everything is perfect. Let's going back to camera layer and start animate. Here I set keyframe for point of interest, position and orientation. Make sure to set keyframe at frame 0. Next I go to last frame and start animate my camera by dolly in. It's look like 3 dimension now for our background image once we start animate it. Now I'm change little bit angle for my starting point of animation to give more dynamic impact. Alright, let's put some text for this animation. Here I hit text tool and start write something. Next I active my text layer into 3D layer by hit this 3D box icon. Then I'm positioning this text to suitable place. Here I got some issue when I move my text backward it become like weird color. To solve this problem I go to my text layer and then adjust the material options. 
I change except shadow setting to off. Now our text back to normal color. Alright let's put another text by duplicate current text layer by hit Ctrl plus D. Then I move this text at the back little bit. Now it's look better. For the last part we can play with some depth of field from the camera. I going back to camera layer, then under camera option I just turn on my depth of field setting. Next I reduce value of aperture to increase the depth of field look. We also can play with aperture value by set the keyframe for certain point to give some dynamic impact. Here I set keyframe for aperture at frame 0 and animate it when the camera move to my second text. So here the final result for this tutorial. Thank you so much for join me today. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell down there to get latest update. We'll see until next time.